we located the victim in her living room. She was lying on her couch, face up, and appeared to be wearing a night robe. She was laying in an odd position. It appeared that a struggle had taken place. There were several things at the scene that weren't adding up. Most of the house was neat and in order, except for the room where the victim was found. The robe stash did appear to be in an odd place. It was lying on the floor near Patricia's hand, not around the robe like you would typically see a robe worn. The victim's vehicle was missing. According to the neighbors, nobody would have had permission to take the vehicle. Another thing missing from the house was a television set from the second floor. The fact that there were no signs of forced entry, we did have a theory that this might be somebody the victim would have had known and had access to the house. We're photographing, we're looking for physical evidence. Every little detail can make a difference in a case like this. When I spoke to Daniel Dresser, he told us that there had been a break-in, and the person that Patricia suspected committed the break-in was Spencer Spielman. Spencer had been a friend of Patricia's other son, Nick Dresser, for quite a while. And Daniel Dresser told us that Spencer had approached Patricia asking for money. So Patricia would give Spencer money for helping out around the house, uh, helping with the artwork. And Patricia had given him a garage code to get in the house. She started noticing things missing, and she started getting a really weird feeling. Wednesday prior to her death, she said, you know, Spencer keeps bugging me about wanting Nick's really nice watch. She said, I've really hit it in a great place. He'll never find it. Patty told me about Spencer stealing a few things when she wasn't home, and she thought he was looking for that watch. So she started texting him, and she was pretty mad about it. She also was texting her son Daniel about what was going on, and one of her texts was, I'm feeling a little scared. Yeah, you can sit down, man. Um, <laughs> Tell me why you think you're here. Honestly, I have no idea. Okay. Um, and, and I mean, obviously the car. Okay. How do you love to use it? Okay. All right, well, that's what we need to get to the bottom of. I go over there to her house once or twice a week. And, and we're, we're talking about... I pat, pat. are you Patty? And uh, I like clean her house and stuff. Like she pays me like a hundred dollars once a month to do all her windows. Okay. Like clean her floors. All that. First impression of Spencer is he's just nonchalant, no respect for anybody. He didn't have a care in the world. Can y'all just please tell me what's going on? We'll give you the opportunity to tell us. We know the answer. Burglary? What are you talking about, burglary? Stolen car. I didn't steal no car. I was trying to get him agitated. Sometimes when you get somebody mad, you know, you get a different reaction. Go here, go there, go for the throat. What the is going on? Murder. Bull Bull Murder. I didn't kill nobody. Well, apparently you did. The f you sit here and lie about everything else. Why would you lie about that? He stole her car. No. What? Just broke in her house, stole her TV. No. Stole a car, stole my fi I didn't kill nobody I or steal did. anything. Then you better tell us who did. I don't know. Yeah, right. You better, you I don't better have the balls to murder anybody. Maybe you didn't mean to. What? I didn't tell us to try save your life. F you. We were getting nowhere. So we gotta try something different here. So we were getting ready to have a little break. 
You want a cigarette, right? Sure. I took Spencer outside to go smoke a cigarette. You want to go right at that exit door? It was all video recorded on a body ward camera to make sure there was nothing said or no promises made or no coercion or anything like that. Got him out of the room for a minute for a reset. And once we walked out the door, we did not talk about this case at all. He was kind of looking out into the darkness. And I don't know if that gave him an opportunity to see that we were actually human. After the smoke break, we walked back in. I put him in the chair, and he looks at me, and he says, I'm ready to tell y'all what happened. So I get Mike, and I'm like, Hey, come on. He said he's ready to, to give it to us, and, and everybody's mouth just was open in awe. Let's go have a cigarette, man. When I laid her down on the couch, like a few minutes later, she just came up freaking the f out, hitting me, and trying to scratch at me, and, and I just. Tightened it left. And I came back and by that time I took it when I took it off, it was too late. I was shocked. I was shocked, but after he ended up confessing, I it was that relief that, that we did get the truth. satisfied with the way the outcome was. At the end of the day, we're speaking for Patricia. You have to stay resilient and uh, determined to, to find the truth. And in this case, we were able to provide justice to Patricia and give her family answers. Patty Dresser was 52 when her life was taken away. I, I think about her every day and I miss her every day.